guys, Ryan here again from Good Dog. We've got Mika here again, doing some training with her on directional training, gonna do a bit of e-collar stuff, and I'm taking a little bit of a different approach with this dog, just because she's a bit crazy, a bit all over the place. Um, and I just want to build some focus. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna be walking back and forward. When she loses focus, I'll, I'll just stim her on the e-collar, give her a hair command, and draw her back into me. And all I'm doing is trying to channel her brain, get her focus, get her back into pack drive. Let's go. I love this little exercise, it's a little one I picked up about a year ago and I, I throw it into the training every now and again but it, it's a nice little one that I Let's go, that, that I like for dogs like this that are all over the place and quite jumpy. It allows me to kind of work them back and forward, back and forward. Let's go and draw their brain in and really work them at the top range. Let's go. Let's go. So every time I'm saying let's go, I'm stimming on the ear collar. Let's go. I'm on about a seven on the collar. Let's go. Let's go. Good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So you can see these reactions are pretty wild. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And you'll see in my other video, this dog we're having fear reactions. Let's go. Um, and barking and lunging at things. We'll chuck a little caption up in the side corner there. Let's go. But now we've got no barking and lunging. We're just working with the actual sight of the dog. So the dog's reactions have changed. They're gone from kicking into, let's go. Let's go. And to full on reactions to just kind of over excitement now. More arousal than anything. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. These Kelpies, this is a Kelpie cross. These Kelpies can be, let's go, quite crazy to train sometimes. They are very, one of the trickier dogs to train. Easy to train in the sense of they pick things up quickly, but when they go south or there, they've got react, reactivity issues. They can be quite tricky to get on top of again. I find that the same with more intelligent breeds, more highly strung breeds, uh, dogs with more drive. Let's go, same thing. They're super easy to train obedience wise, but if they go south and they don't have the correct structure, let's go, can, can kind of become quite menacing quite quickly. No fault of their own, let's go. But it is kind of crucial when you're looking at a dog, you look at what you're going to do with the dog and, and what you're willing to put in to make sure that you, you get, you know, you look after that dog's basic needs. So every time it loses focus, I'm stimming and changing direction. I'm working on a five on the collar. Let's go, so five out of 100, super low. Let's go. So I'm going to change the word now to here. Here. Good, I'm starting to get it into the right position. So I've drawn the dog in here a little bit more and I'm starting to draw it in closer and closer. So it started off crazy here. It's got more and more focus. And now I'm just kind of tightening everything up here. They don't want to lose it here. Here, so you can see dogs will naturally focus on you when you, when you apply pressure on them. Here, it's a crazy concept when you think about it, but me stimming the dog on the ear collar and changing direction here, the dog naturally wants to follow me. Like I said, as I've talked about in previous videos, pressure here is, is like, it's something they understand from one another and it's something they naturally use here. So when you start using pressure on the dog, it changes the dog's drive and they go into pack drive and they naturally want to follow you. So this is all we're doing here. Here is just changing the dog's drive, switching the headspace from predatory, because this dog's primarily switching into prey response. Uh, and I'm just trying to divert Divert its brain into pack drive here. So this is where treat training and reward based training can be tricky here. So you've got a dog that you want to kind of calm down or gain control. If I was to bring treats out, I can guarantee this dog would suddenly start paying a lot of attention. But the second I take them away, that attention's gone. The other thing is when I start to add different stimuli into the situation, we, we run into competing motivators. So movement is always probably going to be something that's going to be highly motivating to this dog. So if, I, if I'm trying to reward based train a dog and keep the dog focused on me and there's all this movements going around the dogs trying to react to movement it's going to be very tricky to keep the dogs focus and like I said earlier you're going to become reliant on treats and there's also no guarantee the training's always going to work but I will bring some reward based training in a bit later on into the training just to do the polishing and the icing on the cake I like to think of it but my sole communicator is going to be this e-collar and I love these e-collars because it allows me to transfer the training very easily you can see the dog reacting 
towards me sometimes. So we call that redirecting. So the dogs like this, when the dog, the more wound up the dog gets, is it's just kind of putting that focus into something else or that energy into something else. And I'm the closest thing. So I do need to be careful with a dog like this because potentially it could turn around and nip me. And that's just, like I said, it's an it's a instinct in the dog. The dog's not meaning anything by it. It's just a redirection of energy is how I look at it. So you can see every time we move toward this doorway, she wants to cut in front of me. Her tail lifts up slightly. So what sometimes happens is they have a protective instinct and they want to protect you over the doorway or they want to get guard the gateway, which can create, let's go, a lot of reactivity in dogs at the front door and things like that. So if you watch this dog, every time I move towards that doorway, ears flicker up, let's go and we lose focus, let's go. So now what I'm doing is I'm giving the dog a chance to listen, so there's no stim until the dog chooses not to listen. So you'll see that as she walks ahead, she'll kind of lose focus. Here, I give her the option to listen. She doesn't, she gets a tap on the collar. So she's learning about consequences for her actions now. And you can see that's quite interesting watching this because what you'll see her do is her ears prick up and she's using her eyes, she's alert, and then when she, you correct her, she starts to soften and use her nose and she starts to take in information differently. So it, this happens a lot when they, you know, if we've given them conflicting information or they don't know what's expected of them or, you know, they just sometimes naturally do it. As you start to train them and start to teach them what you want, their brain starts to process things differently and that's what I'm looking for. It just tells me here, it gives me a good indicator of where the dog's brain's at and that we're making progress. So they're just signs I'm looking for here. So you can see when it starts to react there, here. Whether it smells something or something's triggering it. I'd say it's scent. It's probably the cat or something peeking its nose around or maybe the dogs through the fence behind the camera. But something starts to trigger it and you can just see its nose start to go and its whole demeanor slightly changes and that's its, its arousal level kicking in. So that's it kicking into predatory drive again. Cool, so this is probably going to conclude today's session with Amika. I'm probably, I might do another session a little bit later on, but I'm going to leave it there. Got a bit of work to do there. The main thing is that predatory drive kicking in and her having no impulse control. Once we get that sorted, everything else is going to be really easy. I've already done most of her obedience training, so she kind of understands the commands. has been really easy. It's now just trying to get, get control of this drive, and then once I've done that, like I said, everything's going to kind of slot in together nicely, and we're going to get, she's going to end up being a really nice little dog, this one. Yeah, she's a little sweetie, really.